then what we did is we solved for the angle, right? So we had solved for our tangent and cotangent, and then once it was 2x, then you divide out the 2 and solve for your x. Now, we have a problem with this, with this, func with this equation because I need to solve for tangent of x. Now, there's two different ways that we learn to solve, Hannah. The first way that we learned to solve was just using inverse operations, right? You're just undoing what's happening to your function, get it isolated, and then evaluate. Um, or the other part was if you couldn't just use inverse operations, we worked on factoring, right? And you just go ahead and factor them together, and then, and then you can use the zero product property to solve. Well, we have a little problem here because um, if you guys look at this, I, I can't really do a factoring. I can't factor something out. I mean, there is a couple, you know, factoring part, but it's going to be a little bit difficult as far as working on factoring, and I can't just isolate it if I have two different functions uh, with my variable. So what I'm going to apply is I do notice that I have a double angle. So I can apply the double angle formula. So that's what we're going to insert. So I'm now going to say, rather than tan of 2x, I'm going to say 2 tan of x over 1 minus tan squared of x minus cotangent of x equals 0. OK? Why did you replace that? Well, because I, now I can replace it. So now what this is just going to be working with, now I can either try to work on maybe trying to isolate something or maybe work on factoring in a bit. So the TU can stand for TX? Yeah, this is just the general formula. Yeah, so U is representing your angle, but in the problem we're using X. So, All right, so now let's just kind of do some math stuff, see if I can get it somewhere where I can, um, where I can solve for X. So let's add the cotangent to the other side. Therefore, I have 2 tangent of x divided by 1 minus tan squared of x equals cotangent of x. All right, And the reason why I wanted to multiply that or add that to the other side is I want to get this 1 minus tangent squared off to the other side. Right? I, want to get rid I want to get this off the denominator. So I'll multiply both sides by that. So we know this is going to divide out to 1. Leave me with 2 tangent of x equals. Now, if I apply distributive property here, I'm going to have the cotangent of x uh, minus tangent of x. Okay. Notice how cotangent times tangent, tangent squared, one of the cotangents times tangents will go to 1, just leaving you with one more tangent of x. Follow me with that? OK. Yes? OK. Um, so now, let's go ahead and get all of them on the same side. So you guys kind of notice how now we're looking, looking pretty similar. Now we got rid of that square, square. That's nice. So let's add the tangent. And let's subtract the cotangent of x. So if I add the tangent and I subtract the cotangent of x, I'm now left with 3 tangent of x minus cotangent of x equals 0. Whew. OK, well, I don't have a, I don't have a multiple angle. Um, so I can now at least try to combine these. Um, so to combine them, I can rewrite this as if this is, I could rewrite this as 1 over tangent of x over 1. So therefore, to get them to be the common denominators, you can multiply by tangent of x over tangent of x. Therefore, I'll have 3 tangent squared of x um, minus 1 over tan of x equals 0. Yes, your question. OK. Notice I have 3 tangent of x over 1 minus I converted the cotangent to 1 over tangent of x. Because I want to, I want to combine these two. I didn't know if the tangent over tangent Yeah, so that's why. I, so what I did is I multiplied because right now I have an equation. I had an equation three tangent of x minus cotangent of x equals zero. Well, what are you going to do for this? We still need to solve, right? And if you guys remember when we had our when we did our section on solving, you need to do something. You either isolate, you either factor, or you do something. Well, I can combine like terms. I can combine a tangent and cotangent. I just need to get, make sure they have the common denominator. So over here, my denominator is 
tangent. Over here, my denominator would be 1. So I get common denominators. And now I have something 3 tangent squared of x minus 1 equals 0. Well, huh? The tangent's not, well, I could divide it into both of those. But the way I'm going to rewrite it is cotangent of x times 3 tangent squared of x minus 1 equals 0. What's cotangent? 1 over tangent, right? So if you multiplied 1 over tangent times this, it would give you, um, if you multiplied 1 over tangent times this, then uh, it'd be cotangent. I just, all I did was I just rewrote. Dividing by tangent is the same thing as multiplying by cotangent, right? Right? If you take dividing by 2 is the same thing as multiplying by 1 half. Now, why would I do that or why would I not think about it? Why would I not do what you asked and just say, why don't you just divide it into both of those? I can divide it into both of those. If I divide it into both of those, then I'm going to go back and get my, I'm going to get an answer, go back to where I was. Right? If you divide the tangent back into both of them, you go back to this answer again. You go back to 3 tangent divided by 1 and 1 divided by tangent. Right? So I don't want to go back dividing by 1. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, there's two things we looked at. Solving or, zero, or isolating the value or zero product property. So what I'm doing is I'm writing my division as a multiplication. Why do I want to write it as a multiplication? Because now I can say the cotangent of x equals 0 or 3 tangent squared of x minus 1 equals 0. Now we can solve for these, right? Because now I, wrote a, now I wrote a multiplication problem that sets me equal to 0. So you say cotangent, when is cotangent equal to 0? All right? And we're going to find all of our solutions. So remember, cotangent of theta equals your x over your y. I have this. This is a 0 product property. If this times this equals 0, that means cotangent equals 0 or t 3 tangent squared minus 1 equals 0. So now I'm solving each one. So now I need to look at when does my y over x equal 0. I it, was x over y. it is x over y. So when does my x over my y equal 0? Uh, pi over 2. Right, so you could say x equals pi over 2. And then if you notice, though, x equals pi over 2 and x equals 3 pi over 2, those are only a pi difference away from each other, right? So I could say x plus pi n. That's for those solutions, because we're finding all the solutions. Then here, I'm going to want to add 1. So I have 3 tangent squared equals 1, divide by 3. Tangent squared equals 1 over 3, take the square root. Tangent of x equals plus or minus. Uh, 1 over square root of 3, rationalize the denominator, equals plus or minus uh, square root of 3 over 3. And what problem is this again? 15? So what do I have? I have the right plus or minus square root of 3 over 3. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. OK, so now I need to look at this and say, when does the tangent equal the square root of 3 over 3? Well, if you look at our first coordinate point, which is square root of 3 over 2 comma 1 half, the tangent of that value, the tangent of this angle, which is pi over 6 equals y over square root of 3 over 2. Rationalize the denominator equals square root of 3 over 3. So it's going to equal, remember we're doing the plus or minus. So you're going to have pi over 6, 5 pi over 6, 7 pi over 6, which is the net, which will be the other positive, um, 7 pi over 6, and then 11 pi over 6. 
So your angles, final answers here, are going to be x equals uh, pi over 6. And remember, all you need to do is add pi to get to the other positive answer, which would be pi n. And then x equals 5 pi over 6 plus pi n to give you the other solution. Right? Because remember, we don't need to write in all four solutions. We're trying to find all the solutions. So if you write 5 pi over, or pi over 6 and you add pi to it, that's going to give you the other positive solution. And if you keep on adding pi, you're going to get all the solutions. Same thing with 5 pi over 6 takes me to 11 pi over 6. You can just keep on adding them. So the solutions we have there, and then your cotangent solutions are going to be right there. Whew. OK. That was a long.